Hey, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to learn about users and groups in Azure. My name is Sushant Sudesh and I'm your trainer for this AZ303 Microsoft Azure Architect Technology Certification course. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Let me first take you to the Azure portal to show you where you can find the users. Go to your Azure portal and click on Azure Active Directory. Right under Manage, click on Users. This is where you would be able to find all the users who reside in your Azure subscription. Typically, Azure AD defines users in three different ways. Cloud identities, directory synchronized identities, and guest users. So let us learn these one by one. So what are cloud identities? These users exist only in Azure AD. Examples are administrator accounts and users that you manage yourself. The source is Azure Active Directory or external Azure Active Directory if the user is defined in another Azure AD instance but needs access to your subscription resources controlled by this directory. These users member type looks like this. So when you go into directory synced, it says no, they are your cloud identities. When these accounts are removed from the primary directory, they are deleted. The second type is called directory synchronized identities. So if you look at this user, the bird person, the directory synchronization is enabled. These users exist in an on-premises active directory. A synchronization activity that occurs via Azure AD Connect brings these users into Azure. So their source is Windows Server Active Directory. And the third type is called guest users. These users exist outside of Azure. So let me see if I can find a guest user. Yep, I do have a guest user. Example of a guest user are accounts from other cloud providers and Microsoft accounts such as Xbox Live account or Hotmail, etc. Their source is invited user. This type of account is useful when external vendors or contactors need access to your Azure resources. Once their help is no longer necessary, you can remove the account and all of their access. Let's have a look into how you can create and manage these users. Every user who needs access to Azure resources need an Azure user account. A user account contains all the information needed to authenticate the user during the sign-on process. Once authenticated, Azure AD builds on access token to authorize the user and determine what resources they can access and what they can do with those resources. You can use the Azure AD dashboard in the Azure portal to work with these user objects. Keep in mind that you can only work with a single directory at a time. But the dashboard also has a button in the toolbar which makes it easy to switch to another available directory. You can add a user in Azure AD in multiple ways. The first way is synchronizing an on-premises Windows Server Active Directory. So Azure AD Connect is a separate service that allows you to synchronize a traditional Active Directory with your Azure AD instance. This is how most enterprise customers add users to the directory. The advantage to this approach is users can use single sign-on to access local and cloud-based resources. Another way is you can add users manually through the Azure portal. This is the easiest way to add a small set of users and you need to be a user administrator role to perform this function. All you have to do is click on create a user, provide the name, and if you want to fill out the optional fields, you can do that and then click on create. Another option is inviting a user account. The invited user will need to create an associated Microsoft account if that specific email address isn't associated with one and the account will be added to Azure AD as a guest user. So when you fill out the username and the email address and click on invite, the user will receive an invitation and once they accept the invitation, they will have access to all the Azure resources. Now let's talk about group accounts. So first, let me show you where you can find groups in Azure AD. In the Azure portal, go to your Azure Active Directory. Under Manage, click on Groups. Azure AD allows you to define two different types of groups. Security groups 
and Microsoft 365 Groups. This used to be known as Office 365 Groups. So what is Security Groups? Security Groups are the most common and are used to manage member and computer access to shared resources for a group of users. For example, you can create a security group for a specific security policy. By doing it this way, you can give a set of permissions to all the members at once instead of having to add permission to each member individually. This option requires an Azure AD administrator. Another type of group is called Microsoft 365 Groups. This used to be known as Office 365 Groups. These groups provide collaboration opportunities by giving members access to a shared mailbox, calendar, files, SharePoint site, and more. This option also lets you give people outside of your organization access to the group. This option is available to users as well as admins. Now let's look into how you can add members to groups. There are actually three different ways you can assign access to a group. So when you go and create a new group, under membership type, you have three different types. Assigned, dynamic user, and dynamic device. So let's have a look into what are these. Assigned lets you add specific users to be members of this group and to have unique permissions. Dynamic user lets you use dynamic membership rules to automatically add and remove members. If a member's attribute change, the system looks at your dynamic group rules for the directory to see if the members meet the rule requirements or no longer meets the rule requirements. The third type is dynamic device. This is only for security groups. This lets you use dynamic group rules to automatically add and remove devices. If a device attributes change, the system look at your dynamic group rule for the directory to see if the device meets the rule requirement or no longer meets the rule requirement. So what are Azure service principles? Think of an Azure service principle as a proxy account or identity that represent your app or service. This account is managed by Azure Active Directory. You grant the service principal access to the Azure resources that you need and use the service principal instead of embedding credentials or creating a dummy account for your app. And service principals exist at the tenant level in Azure. They are used to grant access to resources in that tenant. In the Azure portal, you create an Azure AD application to represent your app and you then associate this application object with the service principal. If all of the resources are in the same tenant, then you need to associate only one service principal. If your app needs access to Azure resources in different tenant, then you need a service principal for each tenant. And you can create this service principal through Azure portal, by using PowerShell or CLI commands, or by using API calls. Now let us learn about how to manage multiple directories. In Azure Active Directory, each tenant is a fully independent resource, a peer that is logically independent from other tenant that you manage. There is no parent-child relationship between these tenants. This independence between tenants includes resource independence, administrative independence, and synchronization independence. Let's have a look into what is resource independence. If you create or delete a resource in one tenant, it has no impact on any resources in another tenant. And if you use one of your domain names with one tenant, it cannot be used with any other tenant. So what is administrative independence? If a non-administrative user of tenant creates a test tenant, then by default, Users who creates a tenant is added as an external user in that new tenant and assigned the global administrator role in that tenant. What is synchronization independence? You can configure each Azure AD tenant independently to get data synchronized from a single instance of either the Azure AD Connect tool to synchronize data with the single Azure AD forest and Azure Active Directory Tenant Connector for Forefront Identity Manager to synchronize data with one or more on-premises forest or non-Azure AD data sources. To add an Azure AD tenant in the Azure portal, go to your Azure Active Directory. 
go to your Azure Active Directory and click on create a tenant. This is how you can create a brand new tenant in your Azure subscription. Please note that unlike other Azure resources, your tenants are not child resources of an Azure subscription. If your Azure subscription is cancelled or expired, you can still access your tenant data using Azure PowerShell, the Microsoft Graph API or Microsoft 365 Admin Center. You can also associate another subscription with the tenant as well. So what is Azure AD B2B? Azure Active Directory B2B is known as business to business. Azure AD B2B collaboration lets you securely share your company's application and services with guest users from any other organization while maintaining control over your own corporate data. You can work safely and securely with external partners, large or small, even if they don't have an Azure AD or an IT department. A simple invitation and redemption process lets partners use their own credential to access your company resources. And developers can use Azure AD business to business APIs to customize the invitation process or write applications like self service sign up portals. With Azure AD B2B, there is no external administrative overhead for your organization. The partner uses their own identities and credentials, and Azure AD is not required. With Azure AD B2B, you don't need to manage external user accounts and passwords, and you don't need to sync accounts or manage account life cycles. And what is Azure AD B2C? Azure AD B2C provides business to customer identity as a service. Your customers use their preferred social, enterprise, or local account identities to get single sign on access to your applications and APIs. Azure AD B2C is a customer identity access management solution capable of supporting millions of users and billions of authentications per day. It takes care of the scaling and safety of the authentication platform, monitoring and automatically handling threats like denial of service, password spray or brute force attacks. With Azure AD B2C, you invite users from other social media identity tenants into your own organizational tenants. Now let's talk about guest users. You can invite anyone to collaborate with your organization by adding them to your directory as a guest user. Then you can either send an invitation email that contains a redemption link or send a direct link to an app you want to share. Guest users can sign in with their own work, school or social identities. So let me quickly show you how you can send an invitation to a user. So within your Azure portal, go to Azure Active Directory and click on users. Within the user tab, click on new guest user. By default, invite user option will be selected. Put in the username and put in the user's email address and click on invite. When you send the invite, this will automatically send the invitation to the guest user. After the user received the invitation, the user can click on accept the invitation and that will automatically add the user as a guest user in the directory. So within the directory, you would be able to see the user as guest. Let me quickly show you how it will be shown as. Let me click on load more. So this user is an invited guest user. So when you go under the user type, you notice that this user is mentioned as a guest user. And as you can see that there is an invitation sent for this user as well. That concludes this lesson. In the next episode, we're going to learn about domains and custom domains and i will see you on the next video until then take care